Okay. Camera is rolling. I've got about 20 gigs of storage. So, that should be just about enough time for our Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness discussion, yes. right, Daniel? Yes, yes, indeed. Yes. Alrighty, everybody. Uh, I guess I can just start now. Yeah, we're kind of in a rush today, and we started quite late because of a work thing. Not that work is bad. We love work. It's just my fault for not doing the work. Um, so, let's go. Let's, let's begin in three, a two, a one, two, three, two. Oh, okay, let's go. Hey everybody, and welcome to Not Culture, the podcast about everything but culture. I'm your host, Godfrey Mancaptagao, joined by my co-host and back to playing Doom aficionado, Daniel Levi. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And today, today we're going to be talking about things, because we went on another unexpected hiatus in which we didn't plan. That's what unexpected means. I'm so sorry. I'm an idiot. When was our last episode? A long time ago. Shit. That's all that matters, and that's all that our viewers slash listeners will care about we can't make excuses so so sorry everyone who's been listening um in that meantime i guess let's catch up everybody on what's been happening dan how about you how have you been doing what you've been up to what have you been places to where hmm. what have i been places to uh well no nah, nothing really still living in palm nothing else has really happened uh, sure. i think the elections got deferred i think that's what's happening so yeah it is a thing that's been happening things are happening yes. a bit later also there's there may be an alcohol ban i'm not sure if it's confirmed oh, god but yeah throughout starting... the entire election period so, so that's, that's um be... I, if i'm not mistaken according to the article that we saw in the paper may 14th up until may june july ish oh god that's, not, gotta, that's the whole of june can you pull it up again you have your phone my phone's recording i forget where it is <laughs> i send it to the group i send it to the group but if you are correct that's the entire month of june yeah yeah and we've got a lot of people who have their birthdays in june who are oh, very upset wow, that who are very upset suck yeah yeah because now they're only um in lieu of this alcohol ban the only thing that they can do is like go to the expensive bars where they have to like dress nicely and get harassed by people for you know just having fun you know that's that's probably what's gonna happen very expensive drinks too okay so the story says uh, nationwide liquor ban uh police minister william ongo plans a three-month liquor ban to be imposed during the election period from may 12th to july 19th oh Oh, sorry 19th sorry 29th july 29th 29th, yeah in a letter to all governors he said the liquor ban would prevent trouble during the election the impact of alcohol-related offenses can trigger something bigger around the city, he said. Three months is a long fucking time. It is. It is, it is a long time. I, I absolutely love how uh, the government thinks that only, you know, you know the, the, the best way to get around this issue that may, may happen um, is to just cut it out entirely. You know, you know I think it's, this is all just a natural evolution of that weekend alcohol ban that's been happening since COVID. And yeah. Yeah, you know what? I think that has just made Thursday the new Friday. And so it's basically given mm-hmm. people excuses to, you know, yeah. um, do the smart thing, which is get the alcohol sooner, but then just go crazy on on the Friday and then on the Saturday and then on yeah, the Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, that's been, that's been our life in Mosby. For those of you living in the outside uh, centers, mm-hmm. this isn't a thing for you guys. It's only a Mosby thing. I keep having to remind myself of that. Like, everyone else gets it God. good. Interesting. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I, I, as someone who's just, you know, gotten back into drinking and finally found a very comfortable place for alcohol in my life, this is kind of very upsetting to me. Oh my gosh. Because it's uh, as the day we're recording this now on the 6th of May. Yes. So that's six days from now on the 12th. 12th of May. Mm-hmm. That's when the three month ban starts. So if you want to. Yeah. If you mm-hmm. want to legally get your alcohol, you're gonna legally. Have, you're going to have to yeah. go to like outside your house yeah go to like places where you can get harassed by other Papua New Guineans yeah no that's the thing Ugh. yeah that's always the scary part whenever I like want to go out to drink cause then like you know you could always get annoyed by people and that terrifies me like to my mm. core I'm scared of that yes. and I know a lot of people are too yeah but hey at least uh, I can just like walk up to Hilton and have those like nice draft beers and listen to the cool indie music that they True. always play that's where we went to this week I mean we spent we ended up spending a lot of time at the Hilton and we realized that it's maybe one of our favorite places to hang out because like the 
drinks aren't too expensive the environment's nice and also for some reason they play our music they they literally like this guy walked up to me when i was at hilton i was there sitting down and then he's like listening to the music and he and he wonders hey godfrey is this your music playing are you connected mm-hmm. to the speaker outside and i'm like no they've been playing the song for the last i mean these this kind of music for the last two days and all i've been doing is shazamming their songs and just adding it to my spotify so yeah hilton's great that's lovely and i was only there for um oh, actually that's a pretty weak lead up to something that's quite important that's happened to me this week this week i was uh tapped as one of the hosts of uh well i was tapped to host this youth panel discussion hosted by abc mdi and uh it was we're just talking about uh, political issues and why the 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 people in the government don't really seem to care about the youth and it was this very eye-opening i thought it was very 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 informative as someone who is um for the most of my adult life have have chosen to just stay away from politics and I thought it was just very informative. I, I, I don't think I've ever learned so much in such a short time. Because as, as the host, you know, you're supposed to... Well, as one of the hosts, uh, you know, Klaneth, right? Klaneth Pombo, PNG mm-hmm. for reals. He was the other host as well. And it was fantastic. Um, but the interesting thing about, uh, about being the host for this kind of event is, as opposed to the panelists who aren't supposed to know too much about what we're talking about, because they were just uh, supposed to come on and just give their thoughts uh, about mm-hmm. whatever we asked them. But as, as hosts, we're supposed to, you know, have definitions set up. We're supposed to have statistics in our back right. pockets. We're supposed to do the research and make sure that we're the ones who know what we're talking about so that we know how to craft these questions to get what needs to be talked about out of these panelists. And it was great. We recorded like four shows in the span of two days, which is like nothing new for me. So it was just really fun to just put these host skills and to the the stuff that I do on the podcast, this podcast and mm-hmm. other podcasts, um, just put that into that context and i both learned so much and it was just very fun and it was great what else happened oh yeah we also appeared on uh nogat lasman the nogat lasman podcast that's the thing about that i i barely remember even doing that (laughs) podcast but i do i do know that from from what chan said chan anavai who was the uh Mm. co-host uh co-producer on it as well Mm. yeah he he was one of the um guys who interviewed us along with uh matthias Mm -hmm. mk yoba and they basically interviewed us about whatever was on the top of our heads. Mm. And it was great. Um, but I also can't remember anything from it. I'm interested to see when it comes out because I'd, I'd like mm-hmm. to see what I talked about. Um, hopefully, Yabel tells us that it would be out sometime hey. this weekend. So that's good. Um, but just a forewarning for everyone who's listening to that podcast. I was Actually, a lot of things that day. I was sleep deprived. I, mm-hmm. I didn't sleep at all the day before. I was also e- incredibly and extremely drunk. Um, I don't know if anyone else picked that up. But I was also in the middle of cooking. And the night before, I, I had an existential crisis. Oof. Yeah. So it was a good day, I think. Everyone else mm. thought it was good. I wasn't like when you say you were drunk, it wasn't like stumbling over and I had to carry out of the car to where we oh, were recording. Please. It was like it, you were functional. I'm never yeah, that drunk anymore. I'm never that drunk anymore. <laughs> like it wasn't that bad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like I was functional. You're intoxicated. I wouldn't say drunk. Okay. Like, oh. Okay. Yeah, no. No, fair enough, fair enough. And what else have we done this week? Ah, <sighs> I feel like I'm forgetting. In something. the past couple of I wrote some things down, but like an idiot, I put them on my phone, which is over there. But, I just mean, out of paranoia, I'm just going to check the frame. <laughs> I think uh, just out of, off the top of our heads, that's what happened. But I think I mentioned to Godfrey earlier this week that uh, being a part of these things and not necessarily being responsible for the shooting or editing is quite nice. It's very liberating. Yeah. When you only have one job to do, it's, it's nice. <clears throat> so that was uh, quite the turn for us this week. And it was fun. It was great. And what else do we do today? I can't really, I mean, this week, I can't really think of anything else apart from we went to see Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now, for everyone listening, for everyone watching, uh, from here on out, let's just say for the first couple minutes, we're just going to give our overview of it, our, yeah. our, our spoiler-free spoiler-free free overview. overview, our thoughts on it, and maybe a review. Yeah. And then after that, don't worry, we'll let you guys know when we're going to dive into the movie as a whole, our experience, what we liked, what we didn't mm-hmm. like, and we will be mentoring, mentoring, mentioning spoilers. Hold on. All right, Daniel. So, non-spoilers, mm-hmm. give me your thoughts. I really, really enjoyed it. Honestly, it was just such a fun experience. 
Uh, if you're not familiar, the director was uh, who the director who directed the Multiverse of Madness was none other than Sam Raimi, the man behind uh, Spider Man's one, two, and three with Tobey Maguire. So mm-hmm. if you're a fan of his work and if you are familiar with his work, you'll definitely see a lot of. Uh, uh, familiar shots, familiar uh, mm-hmm. camera pacing, the way he just filmed things. It was very yeah. nice. It was very refreshing to see because a lot of uh, a lot of the editing and camera work that goes into a lot of these Marvel MCU movies do tend to seem kind of samey and yep. they do tend to seem like they're carrying a sort of style and aesthetic. But seeing Sam Raimi have his hand behind the camera was very refreshing and it mm. reminded me of the old... Marvel movies before the MCU was a thing. Yep. And also, also, just to mention, uh, the the guy who did the music it was Danny Elfman. Yep. So it was both Sam Raimi and Danny Elfman again. So both the editing and filming and the sound design, the way the music would swell in certain moments, it just felt like you were watching like the OG Sp- Spider Man one, two, and three. It just had yep. the same, it had a similar feeling in terms of when the music would come in, the dramatic moments, the camera work, the zoom. In. Ah, yeah. just yeah, and no, it was just it was it was, it was pleasant. I enjoyed it a lot. Same. I have to agree with a lot of what you said. For me, I really did enjoy the movie as well. I think a lot of why I enjoyed it does come from the fact that Raimi's style is so prevalent in this movie, which is a breath of fresh air, considering the only other directors that usually tend to do that in the, or have done that in the MCU are uh, people like James Gunn or people like Taika mm-hmm. Waititi. Mm-hmm. And in both of those cases... Those movies just shone through so, so well. But the interesting thing about this movie is that it is a sequel to a movie that someone else directed. Mm -hmm. So there are bound to be some inconsistencies in that regard. Whether those are good or bad, that's completely up to you. But because both of us uh, are fans of Raimi's work, this was definitely a plus for us. In saying that, this is really Raimi's movie for about 90% of it. Mm. There, there is still Marvel DNA in it. There is still um, tonal Marvel DNA, especially. Mm. That's what I want. That's the point I want to make. But for the, for the majority of this movie, I did absolutely enjoy it. But this is also non-spoilers. We want to make this known to a lot of people going in to watch it that it does actually get quite heavy. And what I mean by heavy is I mean, okay, you got the guy who created the Evil Dead franchise. Mm-hmm. You've got the guy who directed movies like Drag Me to Hell. You've got the guy who also directed the movie, uh, the, the first Spider-Man trilogy, who in those movies balanced tone really, really well yeah. in terms yeah. of emotion and in terms of serious moments mm. that involve that may or may not involve horror. So the point I'm trying to get across here is that do expect some actually, actually terrifying and scary scenes. Be careful when you're bringing children into this, because honestly, personally, speaking is from someone from me and Dan who who come from uh, backgrounds where we've seen a lot of horror movies, a lot of horror movies. We are quite desensitized to this. We are quite desensitized to some of the gore that may or may not happen. Mm. So... Just a PSA to people who are taking their kids to see this movie. Expect violence. Expect some very Mm. dark themes. Expect some completely fucked up shit to happen on screen. Okay? That's the warning. And also, um, it's also your warning that we are going to expand that topic into our spoiler spoiler. Spoilers. Spoilers. Into a spoiler review of this movie. Um, where to begin? Oh, then? wow. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, this is, this is this your is final, spoilers. this is your final warning. Sorry, we're going to go into spoiler territory here. Sadly, there aren't any, um, forgetting spells like that uh, in mm-hmm. No Way Home. Mm-hmm. So, where to begin in terms of fo- is spoilers for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness? Well, I, I don't know, but it's just, well, what's her name? <laughs> it opens with, uh, Christine. Ooh, Wait. Yes, it does. Yeah. Well, wait, no, I think a good place to open up is uh, this point. Okay, so, first and foremost, for all of you who've already seen the movie and are listening to this, and for a couple of you stragglers out there who, are, who actually want to mm-hmm. listen to this, and before you watch the movie, this is 100%, okay, this is, uh, this is 95%, 
This is 95% Wanda's story. This is 95% yeah. a sequel to the Disney Plus series WandaVision, which is fantastic. And I urge all of you who haven't seen the show to definitely go watch it before mm-hmm. watching Multiverse of Madness. Do you think I should have mentioned that in the non-spoilers? It's too late now. Yeah. I don't know what I'm <laughs> yeah. No, but honestly, yeah. just this this is base this is essentially um season two of that show featuring Doctor Strange and mm-hmm. featuring uh the character of America Chavez. Yes. Uh and it's basically more of Wanda unfolding into her grief and more of her being corrupted by the thing that she found at the end of the show, WandaVision, the Darkhold. And by the time that we get around to seeing her in this movie, you realize just how much the Darkhold has corrupted mm. her. You realize that she's actually the one who started these events to uh, in motion to, to hunt for America, right? Throughout the multiverse. Throughout the multiverse. Jesus. I honestly, like, the trailer did not reveal a lot. Like, it showed Scarlet Witch, oh, is she going to be evil? I didn't know she'd be mm. the fucking main-ass villain of the entire story. That's the thing. Oh. I'd, I'd want to uh, argue with you on that point, that the trailers didn't reveal too much, because I want to say that they did, but not in terms of story. Mm. I think they showed too many of the set pieces. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they definitely showed a little too much in regards to that. But in terms of the story, you are correct in saying. I mean, I think you're correct in saying that they didn't really lead on to say that Wanda is the the main villain of this mm. movie. In 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 the same vein that um, Thanos was the same was the main villain in Endgame. Yeah. Although that was actually publicly marketed Mm -hmm. in this one there's a lot of ambiguity around who that main antagonistic force is when you watch the trailers for this but then when you go see it you realize that oh shit it's actually wanda who's doing all this crazy messed up shit who's doing all this violent fucked up incredibly amazing (sighs) messed up shit like i said me and dan are um how would I say experienced horror movie watching veterans? So it's kind of this 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 kind of shit. We are absolutely here for. Mm-hmm. I absolutely loved it, um, and I guess in terms of how that melds with the plot of the story, it does so with varying degrees. I'd say. Mm. I think I brought this point up with you earlier, Dan. Like, it's definitely a Raimi movie, yeah. but it's like. Feige's hand was over him at some points, and he's like, "Did you remember okay, that produced this. by Kevin Feige?" Um, oh yeah, there's like a what massive produced by Kevin Feige at the end. I'm not sure if that was that has been in other movies, but maybe it's just n- being picky. I feel like it was new. <laughs> I feel like it was new. It might have been. Mm. It might have not been, but it, it it stuck out to us with this movie. Um, maybe it's because like I the point that I was bringing up is that it is Raimi's movie, but you can feel the studio's um, influence at yeah. some points. Because my favorite thing about this movie are those horror elements, are the crazy, wacky turns that it does. I like the fact that this movie is basically just one two-hour chase scene of Mm. uh, a mother who's trying to get back with her children and an innocent girl who's trying to run away from her. Because, like, remember, she's the one who started this chase. She's the one who found out uh, that her kids are uh, alive in another, in the other realities. Um... Again, you need to watch WandaVision to be a little more comfortable and to be a little more well-versed with that fact. But, like, goddamn, I liked that angle of it. And I do like the twists and the turns and the messed up shit it does to, you know, point out the fact that she is an unstoppable force. She is that antagonistic force. She is the Scarlet Witch in this. And you understand what that means Mm -hmm. by the end of this movie, good or bad. And that was that to me was where the movie shun shun shined shined shun the most um where it didn't was when it sort of separated these really 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 good moments out mm. uh separated them with little dips of comedy of exposition i mean there's not too much exposition cuz there's not too much crazy shit happening um they kind of just you know do the thing where we have to get this thing in order to do this thing. Mm. And to do this thing, we have to use it to combat this thing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just a lot of replace variables, X and Y. There's a lot of, like, rule explanation, but not really lore explanation, which I appreciate. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They didn't... It, the, the, the movie wasn't bogged down by too much of that. Mm-hmm. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing. We can get 
into how that affects the pacing in a while but mm. you know as as a preface to that like i was saying you get all these really really good horror moments that do succeed in scaring you that do succeed in like like making you shiver at some points mm. and it it does that really really well but then you like you 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 separate them with all these little troughs of like oh okay there's a joke there's there's a little thing which is there's there's more exposition but and and that's that to me is definitely the marvel influence in this it's like oh Raimi, you can go crazy but in between you're crazy we're gonna do this yeah. you know and that's like that 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 to know to to know um extent does that like make the movie worse and worse it just it's the difference between making a movie a nine or an 8.5 instead of a 10 mm. that it could have been for me and it was it was fantastic when it did that but then it it had to do all these things all the marvel things to remind people that it's a marvel movie and then we get to an issue like the pacing which <laughs> which sorry which was like a really big issue to me in the beginning cuz yeah, you get yeah. that really big sense of oh they're really trying super super hard to get to uh, a certain beat in the narrative. Mm-hmm. They're trying to make sure that people understand this in order to get to this point. So then the rest of the movie they, they can happen. It's just like, it, it feels like that. It's one of those points where, okay, let's do this first, but then let's get to the fun part. You know, mm. it feels like that at, at I feel some like points. It slows down right when Wanda is introduced. Because to yeah. me, I feel like that's when like the real conflict of the film is introduced. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're trying to They're trying to make sure that they're trying to make sure that everybody understands the conflict here. Mm. And as someone who's seen something like WandaVision and, and who understand, and as someone who understands her motives in that show really, really clearly, when you bring her into this, it's just like, yeah, okay, can we get to the jumping and, mm. and the universe hopping and everything and all the fun parts that I am here for. And I mean, it feels like that around that, like part of the movie but I also want to like bring up a counterpoint to the point that I brought up. <laughs> and I want to say that that intro scene with the fight with the octopus monster. Oh. Ah, I loved it. Best monster fight scene in any MC movie I've seen. In any. Oh. In any. It was so well done. It was so well lit. It was so well shot. The pacing of that fight. The pacing issue we, issue we just discussed. You didn't feel that in that fight. Yeah, honestly, because it felt like, at that point, it felt like it was it was doing a lot of things at once. It mm. was catching up people to a stranger story. It was catching mm. up to the fact that this is uh, the universe now. This is what's happening in this world. And more importantly, it was introducing the audience to Raimi's style. Mm. That, to, to that point, this scene in the movie um, carries that out to, I think, that point's point <laughs> the most. I Sorry, it's, it, it, I'm finding it hard to word this, but what I'm trying to say is it shows that it reminds you straight off of the bat that Sam Raimi is mm. directing this. He's this is this is his style. This is how he shoots. This is like the the the, the simple shots where it's zooming up onto him on a balcony, zooming down to his oh stuff on the street. Gosh. That stuff is it's it's so reminiscent of Raimi that to my to my mind. And correct me if I'm wrong, anyone listening or watching, that I don't recall this or a shot like that ever being done in any of the Marvel movies before that might be saying yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, I might yeah. be completely wrong but this as soon as that happens to to Dan and I to people who are very very well versed with Raimi's filmography and how he shoots it's at that point that we realize that this is a Sam mm-hmm. Raimi movie mm-hmm. and again I go back to those points where Raimi's stuff in this movie is what shines you know the horror elements and there are lots of horror elements Whoa. we can get into those really quickly but just ad- addressing that issue with the plot and the pacing um, I want to say that they and the story to some extent they're the weakest parts in this movie mm. and when I say the weakest parts I mean like they are the least polished mm-hmm. they have a lot of polish into them you can see that they are there for the purpose to push this style along and they're there, for the, they're there to act as a vehicle for this style in terms of the viewer watching this and it's a good thing that it, when you look at it like that I think. And mm. I think if you look at it like that, you get the most out of the movie. If you stop thinking about um, the the things and the plot points in the movie and you, you carry the, the single point that, oh, it's Wanda trying to get her kids back and it's Strange trying to stop her from killing this kid. Right. That's, that's basically like what you have to remind yourself of. And then you'll have a blast of a movie. Um, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? I was going to say something really, really... 
but now I forget. And now I feel like an idiot. Oh gosh, that was a really good point. Um, but no. I think carrying those points in, you're, you're going to have a blast with this movie, honestly. Um, what about you, Dan? Any Anything that you liked that oh, I didn't mention? Gosh, I mean, mainly just the camera work. I think I mentioned it mm. earlier that it's it's so noticeable. It's so noticeable seeing these characters filmed in this way. Mm-hmm. Like how you mentioned the, the, the zoom-ins and everything. Just... <sighs> Like it was just, it was so. Fr- it, it was refreshing. It was very mm. refreshing, and I enjoyed very. it a lot. Just you know, it's it's, and like you said, I can agree with that. That the, st- I can agree that the story. Yeah, it's a it very loud nec- bird. Sorry, <laughs> the story is not necessarily the most, st- the strongest. I wouldn't say it's the center of this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. The, it's it's not. It's like I heard this in a thing once this morning. Right, this is mm-hmm. basically like the comic book version brought to life of, uh, the Terminator Two of the T. 1,000? 2,000? Sorry. 1,000. T-1,000. Yeah, yeah, 1, yeah. It was the T-1,000. Relentlessly and mercilessly hunting down someone. And that was, to me, it, what's make, it, it, it is what makes this movie a thriller in my eyes in more ways than how it you know might be advertised in. Yeah. Uh, and on that, uh, saying that, um, I, I should have meant this earlier. This was the thing I remembered from earlier. When walking into this movie, I'll probably turn, it, turn this into a promo, but when walking into this movie... It is not as much a horror movie as it is an adventure movie with horror elements like, in it. Like the mummy. Oh yeah, like the yeah, mummy. Yeah. Like the mummy. Like um how in the mummy they chose not to hold back. Weirdly enough though, there is like scary there is a scary little amount of blood in those movies. Cause I forget they're oh, PG thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, but they are they they really succeed in making it terrifying. Whereas this movie, I want to make it clear this this movie has blood. This movie has gore. This movie has. Gosh, there was that. <clears throat> I mean, we can talk about it. Okay, I'm gonna call this universe the fan service universe because everybody. <laughs> it's the utopian universe. The utopian universe. Yes. I'm calling it the fan service universe. So yeah, universe eight three eight. We meet the that universe as Illuminati, where we see, which is basically what like our like they were like. 616's um, Avengers. Pretty much. Yeah, we yeah, get yeah, no yeah, confirmation yeah. that the Avengers exist in this yeah, universe. Yeah, I think that's just what <clears> they're <throat> called. Like if, if like in like, but then they have more influence. I guess they're more of a council than than a, yeah. than a team than celebrities. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, the utopian world. Um, I didn't. We didn't know what to expect. I mean, we all knew Patrick Stewart was going to be in it as Professor Xavier. Yeah, that's why I had. I didn't shout it, it, it at all. Like, as soon as he showed up, I was like, "Yeah, okay, okay, move on, move on." <laughs> there was a bit where they played the fucking X Men '90s animated music as like it was like an orchestral version. I was, yes. I was like, "Oh, that was a nice touch." <sighs> fucking fan service universe. And then there's Captain Carter. Yes, we've, Captain we've Carter. Her first live action appearance we first saw in Which what I sadly spoiled myself <sighs> of. Like during the week, I saw one of the new um, uh, TV spots that they released. I was like, "Ugh, they're probably just yeah, the no, same the old shield. footage." And then, and then, yeah, I had to send everyone because, like, if I'm going to be spoiled, everyone else, you every fuck. one of my friends are going to be spoiled. <laughs> so they showed that, and I'm like, "Oh, okay, she's in this universe. I'm happy." Any yeah, Haley Atwell, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy for. I'm happy for. I love her so that much. Was nice, uh, Black Bolt. Was in it? Yes, the black guy Baltigo. He <laughs> makes in a thing. very comic book accurate outfit, mm-hmm. if I must say. And we get um. Oh yeah, this Captain this? Marvel. Oh yes, Captain Marvel. We get Captain Marvel name? as uh oh gosh, what's her name? The friend Rambo. Sorry, yes. the the mother, because I can only remember it's Maria, right? Maria Rambo. That's the mother, because oh my gosh, her, she was in One Division as well. That's where her daughter, the daughter. gets yeah, her yeah, powers yeah. and becomes Photon. That's her name. That's her ah, superhero, Monica. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 she can okay. see light waves and bend them and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, she she's this universe's um, Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. And who else do we get? We get Mordo. Oh, yeah. Who is this universe's Sorcerer, Sorcerer Supreme. Because uh, Wong and Strange are dead or something. Oh, yeah. In this universe, uh, Thanos attacked. Mm-hmm. But Doctor Strange used that evil book that Wanda gets at the end of WandaVision. And the Darkhold. Used that power to defeat Thanos, but he was too corrupting. Like, he yep. he was too far gone, so they had to off him. And then depict him as the hero. Basically, that universe is Tony who sacrificed himself to save everyone. In more ways than one, because he was the one who created the Illuminati in this universe. 
Oh, Remember, yeah, that's strange. What it says right on yeah, it. that's what they say in it. He created us, the Illuminati, uh, because in my mind, um, the the thing that sets this universe apart from other universe is the complete lack of oh, stock. Yeah. And you know what I think? And yes, you mm-hmm. can bring up his name after I say this name. Mm-hmm. I think that the corporation, the Baxter Foundation, right? That's mm. the name. In this universe, which I know any, everyone listening right now just had like a backflip um, of their little nerd brains. Sorry, they're not little. We have big nerd brains. We have big nerd brains. Yes. But um, the Baxter Foundation took the place of Stark Foundation. Yeah. And instead of pushing weaponry to sell to both sides of a war, they pushed science and, and, and innovation. And that's how this universe got pushed along so much farther right. than 616 with Stark and selling his weapons. So that's why I think that Strange in this universe is filling that Tony Stark role, mm-hmm. sacrificed himself here in order to save their universe up from Thanos. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we get introduced to the smartest man on Earth. Well, <laughs> this Earth, um, who turns out to be, do you want to say it? Fucking Mr. Fantastic. Who is played Reed by... Reed Richards, who is played, played by... Played by fucking John Krasinski, of all people. This fan art that has just come to life. Yeah, we did a backflip in our seats. Oh, that was the most surprising... Because ap- nothing was leaked. I mean, we, we we made sure not to like spoil anything for yeah, ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. But it wasn't like the major leaks of freaking when Andrew... And like there were all sorts of rumors that Andrew was going to come back as Spidey yeah. and all that, all that. No, this, but this... This came out of nowhere. This was like... This is an equivalent to Matt Murdock showing up out yes. of nowhere in No yeah, Way yeah, Home. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, and that's, I was, I saw leaks of that, but I didn't think it was true. I wanted it to be true, and then it turned out to be true. But this, I had no preparation whatsoever to, at, at, for any of it, for what was like, happening. There's a point in the movie where they mentioned the Baxter Foundation, and I was like... and I, I'm, 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 I was confused, because yeah, I'm not yeah, yeah, well-versed yeah. in the Fantastic Four. I was, being a fan of, like, Marvel movies and the MCU, I'm conditioned to them name-dropping things and them not really yeah. leading to anywhere. Yeah. So when the man himself steps out of a portal, I was like, what the fuck Oof. okay <laughs> i swear to god yeah and then you know what happens 10 minutes oh later they all god. die wanda literally obliterates them by blood and gore her body in this universe with like evil dead camera and then it's oh oh, my oh god. just so good just that entire sequence so good so she basically uses the dark hold to she evil deaded her alternate self yes. to go to a facility and murder the illuminati to get this child so then she can open a portal to her own children <sighs> sorry her other self's and children other self's children technically has never existed but yeah, and I think if you're still listening to, uh, in and th- at this point and you're scared about the violent and gory bits, it's at this moment in the movie where you probably want to cover your child's eyes. I am oh, not exaggerating. Geez. I am not exaggerating. The way she dispatches there is the blood. Illuminati. There is gore. There is so much violence. There is the shield. There is Captain Carter's shield dripping with blood that came out of somewhere from her midsection, Ugh. and she falls apart. Um, Captain. Uh, Marvel gets crushed by a statue of herself. Was it, was it herself? I can't look like her. Um, Mr. Fantastic gets uh oh spaghetti owed. Oh my <laughs> God. And uh, Black Bolt uh, shouts a hole through his head and collapses his skull in his costume because Wanda takes away his mouth. Jeez, that was that. I. I got flashbacks to, like, the boys. Oh, yeah. Like, when I saw that scene, I was like, oh, God. The season two heads floating stuff. Jesus. Wait, you haven't even seen season nah, two. I haven't seen season two, but I'm I'm familiar with how violent it gets. There's a lot yeah. of heads floating stuff. There's more. There's way more, God. and it's the best, and it's the best. Ah, uh, so yeah, and at that point, it's at points like this where, like I said in our um uh, spoiler free stuff, that me and Dan love stuff like this. We were just not expecting it, nor were we prepared for oh, it. Yeah. So it was very shocking. And um, yeah, I went to sleep last night with the scene of her dispatching them one by one in my head. And I was like, damn, you do not want to mess with her. Gosh. At this point, she's definitely the Scarlet Witch. Mm-hmm. And it's at this moment, um, <clears throat> I think depending on who's watching, this will either scare you very very much or make you a really 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 big fan of the movie and of Mm. wanda so it's like stuff like this because at that point it just gets more and more messed up 
you get a sequence where Wanda's chasing Christine, oh. Strange, and America through um this 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 it's underground this underground yeah, this tunnel. Route, yeah. And she, this is like barefoot Wanda, who's possessed the Wanda in this and universe hobbling. that has has walked on top of glass and has sliced and diced her feet, and she's hobbling after these three with red eyes in the dark. And that was terrifying. Oh my god, this scene lasted like what? A max of 3 4 minutes? Oh yeah, yeah. And then yeah. it was it was short, but like the, it was executed so well because you've got someone like Raimi who understands the tension. Fucked up shit and How messed up and that? horror. That was, uh... and, and it was done so well. And then and then they get to this point where they get to the thing that they're chasing and then I I want to bring up the fact that um going back to the point we made where the story and it's mm. and it's and it's what do you call those things that yeah i mean i want to use another term but the 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 story the things in stories that make it go one way or another Uh uh-huh yeah like at one point um the thing that they're looking for to stop wanda gets destroyed and i'm just like oh no the MacGuffin, because that's the entire that's its entire purpose in the plot it's Mm. just the thing that's sort of a hope for the characters to get to because it seemed kind of obvious that that would happen and then they turn to something else in order to destroy Mm. Wanda which is the power of her kids hating her or some shit I don't know I mean it was kind of heartbreaking (laughs) at that point but like Mm. the point I'm trying to get across is that the story itself alone was just very basic Mm. but I'm just saying that when you tie it into this style and these elements and these moments that are scattered throughout, you elevate that story so much to being not exactly memorable, but you 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 put it up there with the style and you make it, you make the experience better, mm. not the story itself. And and I I walked out of this having had a very very good experience with this movie. So I don't know. It seems like any any final points you want to bring up? Oh gosh, I do. I do want to say I I like the resourcefulness of Strange. We get to definitely see Strange think on his feet. Oh, a absolutely. Lot in this movie. It, yeah. And I think I brought this up when when he's running around with Christine, especially. It felt it it felt like a Doctor Who dynamic. Where oh he, yes. He had a companion who was also smart and resourceful. I'm not gonna absolutely. like like this this this. This, uh, if you don't know Christine, it's of course his love interest from the previous movie, but this is an mm-hmm. alternate one from the utopian world. But she's very smart and she's very resourceful. There's a moment when she basically has to look after Stephen's body because he goes into a trance to. That's the cool thing about this, Christine, right? She's smart in mm-hmm. like in uh, like general science and technology, but she understands the mystic arts as well. Mm-hmm. Remember, that's the only way she would have done the thing with the go back to hell. Ah! I was I was just waiting for her to pick up a chainsaw at that moment and just go ham on all these oh, like I was just fucking happy. Oh god. It was it was just Also, don't forget the fucking <laughs> the the music battle that happens out of nowhere. <laughs> that was I'm pretty sure it was Elfman's idea. It was all of Elfman. Oh, and there is that one point, I think it was when Wanda was first trying to dreamwalk, where we get this crazy rock metal score. God. Remember that. Yeah, Remember yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're like, but like I said, it's all of these really, really, really good moments that are just separated, and they, 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 they start to become those moments that you have to try hard to think of, mm-hmm. and y- they are just separated by these Marvel moments. Yeah. Which, which, like I said, bring this mo- bring this movie from like a ten down to like an eight or an or an eight and a half mm-hmm. for me, and my God, like when you think about these moments on their own, they're the ones that you're gonna walk away with. And you're gonna probably, and it just, like I said, it, it adds to the movie being such a, just an enjoyable experience. So I, I mean, I would definitely recommend a lot of people to see this movie. Just prepare yourselves. Yeah. When we say this is the this is the MCU's first attempt at a horror movie, I I want to yeah. say that more so than the first one would have ever been. I know you have the incredible Scott Derrickson who did the first movie, who also did movies like. Um, uh, fucking Insidious. Yeah. No, not Insidious, sorry. Conjuring? No, it's, it's, it starts with Sinister. an S. Sinister. <laughs> Insidious. Who also did movies like Sinister. And that movie was, uh, mm-hmm. I think, one of the first movies in a long while that came along to actually terrify me. Mm. It was really good. So, I mean, you could feel in that movie how, again, it was the Marvel machine muting yeah, the artist's, is, yeah. yeah, their director's creative vision. With this one, you get a little less of that, but instead they have inserted moments that just don't feel the tone. Mm-hmm. So like I said, it goes back to um, the point I made earlier. Definitely go watch this movie. It's a great movie, but 
It's less of a horror movie than it is an adventure movie with some blood, gore, and guts and some very disturbing scenery in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any final notes? Noits? Noits? Any final notes, Daniel? Uh, well, you know, just, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'd suggest... I guess brace yourself if you're not like me and Godfrey who are used to or appreciate the like horror elements and all that. But I think coming into this movie, I knew it was going to be good because it was directed by Sam Raimi who knows how to handle horror elements and more importantly, knows how to handle superhero fight scenes. He knows Absolutely. what needs to be focused on. He knows Ooh. what Ooh. parts of the fight or what parts... He of, knows where to give attention yeah. to and how to... Specifically, how not to break it up that it just becomes a jumble mess of an edit yes. with the viewer. Yeah. Like, and a, and a really good example of this, just to bring up one more thing from the movie, is there's a moment where Strange has his powers nerfed and he also nerfs another like fellow magician who happens to be Mordo. Mordo, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And they just happen to have... They, they have to... Like, like break out into a fist fight where they're basically hand to hand combat and then we get reminded of two things of the fact that narratively speaking Strange is actually quite good at martial mm-hmm. arts not just mystic yeah. arts and we also get reminded that Raimi knows how to shoot a hand to hand fight scene with mm. str- I wouldn't say like super powered people but with people who are well versed in this mm. stuff and that, that again that's another example of a really good Raimi moment that gets separated by Marvel moments but again, I think you'll definitely have a lot more fun with this movie when it gets into its mid to second half. Mm-hmm. Because you you feel so much that the first half is a lot of setup, 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 setup to deliver upon that um, multiverse of madness, universe hopping feel mm-hmm. and thing that they, they that they're that they're marketing to do. Obviously the trailers are all marketing to do. Um, if you've seen most of the trailers, you probably have a taste of all mm-hmm. of the what do you call it? Uh, the the set pieces, the action set pieces in the movie, um, kind of has a cheesy ending, but I liked it. The has a Defender Strange winking corpse at Chavez was a little <laughs> okay, uh, but I liked it. But again, I want to call that a Raimi moment because it was fucked yeah, up, and he knows yeah, how to that's, turn that's that. That's an Evil Dead moment. That's yeah. an Evil Dead moment, and yeah, ah, uh, but definitely, um, if you want to appreciate this movie a little more. Watch some of the Evil Dead movies. Watch some of um, Raimi's movies. Watch the Spider Man. Watch Spider Man One and Two. God's sake! You'll recognize this. if you're familiar with Spider Man One and Two or Evil Dead. You'll, you'll they're recognize shot for shot recreations, basically. You also recognize another old man who makes a small cameo. It's not Stan Lee, but he's someone who's been in almost every Sam Raimi. Well, actually, yeah, every Sam Raimi movie. Was he in ever. um Drag Me to Hell? I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he is, but yeah, okay. no. Nah. Chris Campbell makes an appearance and does his whole uh, possessed hand yes. fighting himself. Ah, and it's just, uh, the old man still got it. Absolutely. Ah. But I guess that rounds out all of our thoughts for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Ladies and gentlemen, it has just started showing at Paradise Cinemas. Go and have a watch. We definitely recommend it. But like we said, brace yourself. There's a lot of things in here that are not or have not been in any mm-hmm. other Marvel movie. To some, that might be a winner. To some, that might be a really bad thing, an unexpected thing. But we'll let that uh, we'll let that decision be made by you, good listener. And right now we're going to launch into a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about a topic that is very, 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 very dear to my heart. And to anybody else's heart who has been ever ridiculed by the public. If you want to know more, stick around for after the break. Thank you. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Not Culture, the podcast about everything but culture. And now, today on the show, for the second segment of today's episode, uh, we are going to dive into a topic that's, uh, that's quite dear, quite dear to my heart. And here to talk with us about this topic, please make welcome to the, to the, to the guest uh, podcast chair, Miss Rebecca Tobena. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, oh you God, know, no. I, I've seen your podcast, well, snippets of it uh, here and there on social media, and I've always wanted to be on it. So, you know, when you reached out, I was like super excited about it. Uh, mm. You know, m- most of what I do is usually like online on social media, and mm-hmm. sometimes I receive, I wouldn't say backlash, but uh, so, so many opinions about how I present myself. And, mm-hmm. y- you know, it's it's just something that uh, I've come to 
deal with since you know it's it's always been like that growing up especially from a different socioeconomic level in mm-hmm. png yeah so yeah 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 well, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast to talk about this topic that's dear to my heart, and I hope it's dear to all of you because I finally want to fucking address it and <laughs> you know just bring it up because I don't think I'm I'm a very firm believer in if we do not put a light on something, mm-hmm. it's going to be forever ignored. If we're going to yeah. treat something as a taboo subject, it's going to remain a taboo subject because you know the by very, its very nature, it's not mm-hmm. supposed to be talked about, and for some reason. This is, at least in my head, it seems to appear as something like that. Where people just don't want to talk about it. They just sort of shit on people who do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sorry, I should have probably prefaced this with the actual uh, topic. Or at least, you know, bring it into my understanding. So, today we're going to be talking about the perceptions of Papua New Guineans towards other Papua New Guineans mm-hmm. who do not have a quote-unquote local Papua New Guinean or that uh, accent PNG right? accent yeah that PNG yeah. accent and so my understanding of this if I want to just break it down further is what is the fucking problem that local Papua New Guineans have with other Papua New Guineans who don't who, who sound white who, yeah. who sound like mm. oh they've, they, they've lived abroad for a while or who sound like they're quote unquote trying to sound like they're from somewhere else or trying to sound white mm. and that's always been like something that's pissed me off ever since Mm -hmm. I first received backlash for this and uh, that might be complete shock to some might be shock to no one but I first got this backlash when I was in high school because Mm -hmm. of the way Mm -hmm. that I talked like this it was very uh, it's it's gonna make my hands hurt my mouth hurt if I keep saying quote unquote but (laughs) it's like I I kept on getting shit for sounding like a white person basically Mm -hmm. growing up and to this day I still get it and I want to get and Dan from you as well I want to get your opinion on this Mm -hmm. Um, but Rebecca this is why I brought you on yeah Um, I I, I thought you'd be the perfect person to talk to about this just because I've heard from the uh, amazing content that you put on on social media especially now these days TikTok Mm -hmm. I hear that I heard that you were getting some backlash yeah by by people who just thought you were you know it's that trying to show off or trying to sound different it's it's all of that and I wanted to get your thoughts on it and I guess where mm. that started, if you had uh, experienced that at an earlier age and versus now and yeah. how that's changed, if any. I think going into high school, that's when I first mm. realized I, you know, was different with mm. my accent compared to uh, my classmates because I went from an international school, well, an IA school to somewhat, it was also a private school, but still a whole lot of uh, other Papua New Guineans were there and I sort of spoke different. But, uh, you know, somehow everybody got used to it. it. It went to a point where people thought, like, my mom married some white guy. That's probably why I sound like this. Mm-hmm. But, uh, oh, just, just I just want to throw a funny story. In yeah, sure, here. sure, please, please. Um, while I was studying in Turkey, I had friends from other parts of the world. And mm-hmm. one of my friends, um, he's Ukrainian. He once told me that I was the whitest black person he's ever met. Oh <laughs> gosh. Because of hmm. the way <laughs> I spoke, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um th- not only did I think I was going to be treated different in my country, I was always, uh, you know, perceived as someone quite different as well abroad. With mm-hmm. my skin complexion, I was expected to sort of sound a certain uh-huh, way yeah. so um yeah but or, or i i guess the first time when uh, f- since high school i don't think it was really a big deal but you know coming back and going on social media mm-hmm. and yeah i do sound a whole lot different compared to when i was here uh, many many years back yeah uh some some uh girl lady on um I guess she saw one of my uh, one of our videos, us going live on mm-hmm. uh, our uh, radio station, and then she just goes on, just just comes in and she's like, like, what are you trying to you pr- pretend to be? You know, speak oh with a PNG accent. Oh well, my god, we're not Americans. We don't pronounce our R's. Oh my uh, god. And then she, she, it was something along the lines of like, I mix race, but like I sound more Papua New Guinean. Like I'm a real Papua New Guinean. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. 
I, um, I was really taken aback by this uh, just her comment uh-huh. and then of course there were other people who added on as well as I made videos addressing the issue saying that I was putting on a, a forced accent that just be a Papua New Guinean you know stop mm-hmm. trying to be somebody else but I can't help it that I can't. is like you, right? <laughs> that's 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 the that's the most frustrating when they when they try to tell you like I've I've faced those comments before. It's like when they try to tell you to stop trying to be somebody mm-hmm. else or try to to just or when it's like the most ironic thing is when they tell you to be yourself and it's just like I I I am. This is me. Does, what what does what that does that anger you? And <laughs> like like I I've I've always been like perplexed as to why that is and i think it's it's just now that i've uh come into something like this podcast where i can actually put this issue out there and i i I want to ask any of our listeners and i want us to theorize maybe Mm -hmm. because i i'd also like to piss some of them off honestly to be completely fucking honest let's do this i want to know why why Mm. does this seem to piss off people why does it make them angry is it because um they think we're uh, uh, unpatriotic. Is is do they see it as an affront to what it is to be Papua New Guinean? If that's the case, what the fuck does it mean to be Papua New yeah. Guinean? Is it all in your accent? Is it in your behavior, or is it in something that's more? I don't know. I, I something. I don't know how to preface this, but I'd like it to be like this. But is it is being Papua New Guinean something more in? Your values, mm-hmm. which is a word that was thrown around in a lot this week, especially in those panels that yeah. we did. Again, those were extremely eye-opening things. That I'm, I was just so glad that I was um, on something like that. Oh, and sorry, ladies and gentlemen, the first segment that I, I mentioned that I was in a youth discussion panel where we got um, youths from mm-hmm. around the uh, well, country, around or people we knew, yeah. yeah, to come in and talk about their perspective on voting and politics mm. and the current election year. And Rebecca was actually one of those people and one of those yes. youths. Yeah. And she brought on some really, really interesting topics from the perspective of a content creator. And we mm. thought, you know, with a conversation like that, it's extremely important to get everyone's uh, differing opinions. Mm. And, and it, it helps a lot more when everyone is just from so many different backgrounds and fields. Mm-hmm. So... I was just saying, I really like what you brought up, and I, th- I thank that. As someone who comes from the same sort of background, content creation, it was really awesome. just nice to have well, someone else there, probably on that same train of thought. So, sorry, I kind of diverged a bit, but I just really wanted to mention that. But yes, let's get back into this topic. What do you think, guys? Why are they so angry at us? Mm. <laughs> I, have, I have a theory. Uh huh. <clears throat> I have a theory that if it's an accent that's anything other than an Australian accent, mm-hmm. people have a problem with it. Why? Maybe because to them it makes sense. What do you... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like... Yeah. Well, because I think because it's, a, it's our former colony and because Australia is so close to the country, it would make sense for Papua, Papua New Guineans to go down there and come back up with an accent. Even though I know that, you know, people still do cop shit for having an Aussie accent. They but do I feel like, so much! But I feel like... I mean, what do you think? Do you think they, they, Do you think there's a bias towards... Not towards it, but... Do like you a think kind of there's accent. more... Do you catch more shit because you have a more American sounding accent than an Australian sounding accent? As someone who has been called out for having a, ugh, I'm sick of saying this, quote unquote, <laughs> American Australian accent, um, I can only say that for myself. Um, I have had a meme made after me. Wow. Just, I'm kind of wearing like a I, I, I shared it a couple days ago on my Facebook. <laughs> it was just so funny. It was, um, so I can only speak, uh, you know, from my perspective. Mm-hmm. I think. Honestly, um, oh, as a as a one, I wouldn't really say the where matters so much for me, just because I do have that particular accent. It's mm-hmm. not a completely bogan accent, you know. I don't speak yeah. like I, I I I just got off the boat from Australia or something. <laughs> um, no, but I I just speak like this, and I've just gotten flack for that particular accent. But Speaking uh, of someone who has who has be, who's who's been the person for some reason that some people come to me to complain about uh, mm-hmm. people with accents, mm-hmm. I do find more of that flack is directed to people with Australian accents who oh. are Papua New Guineans. It's like it's that it's that common story. It's just like oh, I had a friend. She she stayed in Australia for like two weeks and is like oh my god, it's a coconut, you know. Like I, <laughs> I, no, I I I do think that sometimes those people. 
people who just mm-hmm. go to Australia for a couple of weeks and come back, I, I think sometimes they do exaggerate their accent sometimes. Like sometimes I, uh, but I, you know, I don't know. Everybody has different yeah, experiences. It's that's the, that's the thing. So uh, who, who knows? But, uh, you know, with having an, so, uh, like an American <laughs> accent, yeah. or, or I, should I say quote unquote? Because oh, God. <laughs> I mean, you do what you will, girl. I'm not really that. It's, it's, I'm just been, you know, uh, the, what is it? Conditioned to do that. But yes. It's, it, it, it's like, yeah, it's expected. If you're going to have a white accent, it has to be an Australian accent. Mm. You know, it, mm. why, Ameri- uh, why, why America is just too far. Like, you, do you want to pretend like from, I, I don't know. I, that's it. That, that's, that's really, really, I don't know how to answer this, your theory. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I see the merit in it, though. I see why he's brought it up. Because I, there is some, I wouldn't say that I'd agree with you. There's more or less, but there, I mean, mm-hmm. there is less. Is that what you were trying to ask? If there's less shit thrown at people with Australian accents than there is at any other accent? I mean, that's just what I, that's, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. just a theory. Like, I wouldn't believe... Oh, is it that way? I, I, would, I, mean, I wouldn't yeah. agree, but mm. I do know there is there, there is this imbalance of mm. shit being thrown at people. And I think the kind of accent you have really does mm. um, dictate how much shit gets thrown at you. Yeah, I think, like, um, oh, my theory uh-huh. would yep. be that uh, sometimes Papua New Guineans don't like different when it's coming from other Papua New Guineans. Mm. Uh, like oh, it's that thing you know, like oh you're supposed to be like this because you're from here yeah like yeah. W- you know we're, we're from the same place why why do you want to act different I mean we can take it back to how jealousy is really there's so much jealousy especially in our own places like our own provinces back home mm-hmm. like family against family nobody everybody wants everybody to be on an equal playing field you know nobody yeah. wants somebody else to be too successful there's oh. th- there's just this mm. Th- th- that's what I mean when I say that Papua New Guineans don't like different when it's, it's coming from other Papua New Guineans. So does that mean that we associate different, like different, different. with success? Uh, and to that extent, mm. that's what I'm picking up here because people, the the way it seems to me is like people don't like it because they're trying to act like they're better than everyone else. Or at least they did think, I touch a nerve? <laughs> or they think that you're trying to act like you're better than someone. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you're yeah. really not. That's just how you sound. That's just being yeah. yourself. Yeah. Do you think it's like there's there's a sense of that going on? Um, I I I, th- I think so. I I don't know, but like hmm. it's it's wise to p- probably talk to somebody from like uh, some educational institute, probably like UPNG or Unitech. They've got True. this SOM some what that, is known I as know SOMS, what that is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you heard of it? You know when people like the students that come from like disadvantaged, mm-hmm. dis, quote unquote disadvantaged backgrounds. Uh-huh. I want to say disadvantaged, but they n- not coming from a family with high economical status. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So when they go to university, it's, it's quite difficult to take care of themselves. So they um, they take care of each other, and they call SOMS because it's short for Somalia, Somalian refugees. Yeah. Have you never heard that term before? I've heard it around yeah. and Songs. I've heard it explained, but never to this extent. So thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, that's a thing that's that, that's very it, insensitive, but okay, it, it, all right. Yeah, y- yeah like, oh. but some students are really proud to be part of this, uh, mm-hmm. this SOMS community because when once they graduate or they, they get a job, they're, they're really proud to say, like, we came from this situation. And, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I, I think what I saw when with the UPNG issue uh, last year when the, the the girls were being harassed, you know, uh-huh, and then yeah. they tried to talk about it. And right, then yeah. you had a whole community of guys and girls coming up, speaking against it. And the backlash started from the Psalms UPNG page. Like the, mm-hmm. there was a Psalms oh. page there uh-huh. that said, why are you branding all men this way? But obviously it, it wasn't about all men, all male folk in UPNG. Mm-hmm. But I, from from my like point of view, and I don't, I pr- probably this is right or wrong, but what I saw was that they felt sort of jealous that these students who are living in the dormitories, living well enough, why are their issues being brought up and we're having the media come cover them, and uh, when mm. they're talking about these terrible male students that, who so happen to be from that particular right. Um, mm-hmm 
group in university they thought that it was a whole attack on them it was a social attack yeah right on on, on, on class and status instead yeah, yeah rather than it was just what it appeared to be mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. harassment sexual harassment yeah yeah interesting so oh wow th- that's that's another thing to to take into consideration i think that some uh, you know p- people or y- young people who come from disadvantaged families feel like the the rest of the world is against them does not want to take care of them and especially if they're in a university and the university is not uh, looking at their issues i mean mm. they they're going to they're it's just going to perpetuate gonna be, yeah, yeah they're going to be against anything that uh is you know talked about uh, by oh, yeah. yeah different or talked about oh by, by a someone different class who, of people yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. right okay i'm trying to make sense honestly it's coming through no yeah. it coming through it, it coming through it's <laughs> coming through because basically what you're saying that this is more of a a classist issue than it is yeah. anything else hmm. and obviously from that term it drips down to things like perceptions that other people have and i'm saying people instead of Papua New Guinea because this is this is a this is a larger issue at hand mm-hmm. every a society has issues like this where one class uh, thinks a certain way another class thinks a certain way and there are clashes that happen in between yeah. I mean you have an entire Korean film genre dedicated to stuff like this it's, it's oh, a yeah. really interesting thing to dive into so thank you I guess for taking and twisting it to that I mean not twisting it but allowing us to see it from that mm. perspective yeah. I think that's a really good and uh, good way to look at it. It, it it counts that way but then I guess the issue from that is when ha huh, i guess when it takes a, a a larger scale is when when it stops being such a community thing and then s- things like the, the the media come in and then turn into something else mm. i mean i in cases like i guess in terms of what the point that i'm trying to bring up with accents and all that i don't think it'll ever go that far mm-hmm. unless someone themselves is in the media and is in that is in the eye of the media like let's say he's hosting something like i have or like you have yeah that's oh that's, yeah, yeah yeah that's when it starts to turn into something else and i just thought and i just think that at that point it just starts turning into i don't know no hate crime is too much of a harsh yeah. word it just it just becomes harsh it just becomes hate it just it just yeah, becomes yeah, bullying yeah. it just becomes another form of bullying yeah i guess when it's on that scale how do we treat it and how do we i don't know combat it and i guess to get to the root of it why why does that happen like that is it just an extension of that of that class issue is it because someone's mm. in that limelight and they're being all posh and they're being all fancy and they're being all in the camera and mm. look at me i'm better than you and is it mm. that is that why the papi is like fuck you no you're the same as me stop doing that stop no and then that's why they get pissed off hmm. like i guess that's what i'm trying to bring up here it's like, it's as a natural it's it's, ex- it's exactly that because yeah. i yeah. i i receive that um from people you know face to face as well as online but the thing is you know the more we talk about it and i i'm i was really i was happy that i talked about it more because mm-hmm a whole lot of Papua New Guineans came up and they were sharing the same stories mm. like yeah I was I was mm. receiving a whole lot of backlash for my accent but I cannot mm. help it and I'm like okay so you know the, I'm not the only one there are a whole other Papua New Guineans out there and we just have to exist and sh- just show people this is how we are we're still Papua New Guinean even though we sound different you just have to deal with it just, that's just it. deal with it we're that's still it. With, we're still PNG yeah that's it I think that's a really good way to think about it just remind them all that we're still Papua New Guineans and yeah. we, we, we if anything it's just I'd okay I think I want to shift this just for a little while to, to terms of how personally my upbringing shaped the way that mm-hmm. I speak mm-hmm. okay so when I was little my parents worked a lot and by a lot i mean like they would leave the cracker doll and come back like when i would go to bed at bedtime or they pick me up from school drop me at home and then go back to work mm. and then come back later so most of my exposure to let's say being social um in lieu of like talking to actual people like my friends uh-huh. it just came from television yes, and it came from exactly. like tv shows movies yeah. and all of that and that's why when people ask me uh, when people ask me oh why do you have a different accent to other Papua New Guineans I'm like oh well I was basically raised by television when I was little like my formative years came from a lot of um Australian television mm-hmm. a lot of um, American television because at the time um those are the channels that I was exposed mm-hmm. to and that basically 
Yes, if that's something that I was constantly exposed to, that's all I could regurgitate back in that way. So it just turned into a thing that was learned over time. And over time, it just sort of stuck because I kept on perpetuating it for myself. It might shock you both, but I was not that much of a social child. (gasps) <laughs> that is very shocking. <laughs> no, I just stayed home a lot, and I just loved watching my TV and watching my uh, movies. Because, and like to an extent, that has influenced me in more ways than just my accent. Mm-hmm. I am now such a big fan of movies and pop culture and music and television and filmmaking that I I, I would really um, like place that all on because of those years that I was exposed to it, and because of that, it it it, it made me realize. Or it made me grow up with more than just the accent. Mm. I, I now have that method of thinking like a filmographer, thinking mm. like t- television. Like you go with me to a movie, and I'll be like, "Oh, that's a good shot. That I can see that yeah. match cut. I can notice <laughs> that." Mm. Like you go with either of us to a movie, we won't shut up about it's this too shit. Technical with you that's guys. It, that's the thing. That's the thing. We can barely just sit down and watch a movie and just enjoy it. Um, but coming back to this topic, it's like my upbringing was because of the way that I talk, but it also, you know, inspired a lot of other things that make me who I mm-hmm. am. And so that's why it pisses me off to no end when people mm. come up to my face and tell me, what the fuck are you doing? Just be yourself. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> you want me to be myself? And I'm like, oh, I had that so much growing up and going to school. It was just, Gosh. it was so annoying. And then I guess... I don't know. Do you guys have similar stories to share before we go on to the next topic? <laughs> no, it's, it's the same with me. I, I grew up with, with television. I was raised as an only child. Parents uh, were working always. Um, yeah, the, my best friend was the TV, and that's that's how I, I got to learn to speak. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And I, I think I, I, probably, I witnessed this yesterday, and, you know, I think it's true that the TV or films whatnot can influence how little kids speak Mm -hmm. so my little cousin he's in 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 a preschool right now or yeah uh he goes to some some school some primary school uh at at, where is it girl (laughs) someplace anyways yes (laughs) yeah so this little kid still speaks talk person but when he wants to speak english totally different accent he's very Mm -hmm. animated also and this this was the first time I met him yesterday, and he he comes up to me. He's speaking talk with him, but when he comes up to me and he just looks at me and he's like, "You look like a witch." Uh, I was like, "Straight up." Oh, you gotta um, love the honesty of children. And, and he's like, <laughs> "Your your your uh, your face, your nose, like really enunciate un, 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 enunciating his R's. Mm-hmm. Your nose is very big. You look like you're a witch." <laughs> I was so taken aback, Damn. but then like I could hear his accent mm-hmm. sort of change when he was speaking English compared to speaking Tokpisin. So and yeah. when I um, told the mom about what he said, my um, aunt she was like, "Yeah, he's always watching TV. He's very animated." It's like, okay, yeah, totally oh. understand that. Totally oh understand my that. god! And that brings up that point. You and I had this conversation, like I, I think it was a couple of days ago, mm. where you look at the younger generation than us now, the kids, and it's like, t- tell, let me know if I'm wrong. They seem to have that astounding ability where they can go from like, talk with in, so fluent. Sorry, I also want to throw in there that I sound like so terrible when I speak talk with in. But going back to this, it's like they can speak talk with in, so fluent, but when they want to speak in an accent, uh, no, I don't in want to say English. That. Well, when they want to speak in English, sorry, when they want to speak in English. They speak it very p- professionally and a- a- accurately, mm. and they enunciate words yeah. with their R's. And I've I've seen a lot of kids do this, and like, it, it seems to me that the 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 things that we went through when we were younger that developed these uh, ways of speaking in us, they're now a lot more widespread mm. to a lot of younger mm. kids because they it's reached reached that generation where. So many other kids have to grow up on uh, on on TV or on mm-hmm. different forms of media and other things that expose them to different ways of talking, and not just other Papua New Guineans around them when they're growing up. Like, right? Yeah. Y- you get younger kids who just. Mm-hmm. I I saw um th- there was this video on TikTok. This uh, little three year old, American kid, but she's got a British accent because she keeps watching Peppa Pig. Oh. 
and Peppa Pig mm-hmm. is British, so she she sounds British in her American family. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, that's that's basically it, it, right? Yeah, it play it plays a huge role. What we watch really plays a huge role in how it's, we is that speak. influence. Yeah, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. My gosh. Oh, and then so you get that influence and then it, it gets imprinted on you and then you just perpetuate that the more yeah. you speak it. And then you grow up and then people just, uh, I don't know, it, it pisses them off when you when you do that because Oof. it seems like you're putting on an act. And now I just want to touch on like the professional side of how this accent has affected me in the professional space mm-hmm. um, or ugh, this accent. This way of speaking, or should I use them interchangeably? It seems like I'm thinking too much about it's it. It's the same thing. It is. Yeah. 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 Well, because like the way I see it, how, how it's affected me in, uh, I don't know, meetings or things that I host or professional things. Like uh, a good, good example is vocal fusion. It, it, mm. It, mm. This, the way that I speak like this, for me, it helped me uh, in, in the way that I write my scripts, in the way that it... it, it, it got my messages across to people and as much shit as i got from it i also got so many people that were that kept on like congratulating me for doing mm-hmm. such a good job and mm-hmm. it's 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 always that interesting balance of people i mean i wouldn't say it's balanced but there's there's definitely a lot more people who say you know congrats rather mm-hmm. than the ones but then it's all always the 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 shit that that gets said about me that usually takes flight on social media so t- that seems to me like oh so maybe uh, a lot of other people think think like that mm-hmm. too but in terms of how it's affected me professionally i can say that you know being like this and speaking like this in no way that's forced whatsoever um has done wonders for my career as someone who mm-hmm. hosts things as someone who has a podcast as someone who mm-hmm. uh who Truly. likes to you know engage in conversations in this sort of space because again it may shock you i'm not that much of a social person (laughs) Uh but no i think just looking at what it's 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 brought me i Mm. i wouldn't change a single thing about that Mm -hmm. no matter how much shit it's like people seem to throw my way it's like you know some people just tell me to wear it as a badge of honor, so I do. Mm. <laughs> That's why well, I, li- I like those memes. <laughs> I share them constantly. There is, like... there is one thing I'll say. Yep. They talk shit about how you sound and your accent, but they can understand exactly what you're saying. They're not yeah. struggling to hear <laughs> the words, your pronunciation. They, they know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Oh, that, that really Thank pisses you. me off. Right. Like, just you're looking for an issue where there is no issue, man. Just chill you can still understand me that's it their only issue is their perception mm. of you mm. and oof, i still don't know if we got to the the, the first question that i asked is like why do they think that is is or or was it because of that class issue that i brought up is that why they think that the people who have mm. a problem with that why do they have a problem with that is it because is it because they think that people who speak or have this accent have just forgotten what it's or what it means to be Papua New Guinean is it is it is it to them does it mean we're throwing away our culture is is that why mm. they're so upset like that's what I want to get down to the bedrock and I I, I love that you guys are here to theorize why mm. but this is also as much as a question it is it is to you as it is to our audience mm-hmm. to, to reach out and answer in the most civilized way possible, please, ladies yes, and please. gentlemen. Yes. Please. Yes. Talk person too. Like, honestly, I'm open to learn. If you hear me try to speak in talk person, I sound like a white person trying to speak in talk person. It's not an exaggeration. I, I, I think my talk person sounds, sounds PNG, hopefully. Ho- yeah. Hopefully it sounds, yeah. Do, yeah. do, you, do you want to give us a... And show oh, me how. No, because okay, no, 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 the, our, the the school that co- coordinated our, us teachers was really big on getting English speakers from so many different parts of the world because mm-hmm. we're trying to break the stereotype that being English English does not have an accent English is not uh, from from England or from the US yeah. mm-hmm. you, 
or from Australia. Just because you're from those places does not mean you speak good English or does not mean that English is your language. That's you it. can be from South uh, South Africa, from Brazil, from wherever, and you speak English. Mm -hmm. English does not have an accent. That's it. And that, that's what uh, this school was trying to break down in... in uh, in this different schools, uh, especially in Poland and in Belarus and in Ukraine, it's trying mm. to break the, the stereotype that uh, if you speak English, you don't you don't have to sound like you are from mm. wherever. Right. You can speak English, and as long as you're b uh, able to, you know, convey what you want to say, that's enough. It's that's enough. It, yeah. yeah. That, so that. hopefully, we, I was just th like with that in mind, you know, coming into PNG, it's just I just really ha I have this notion that I don't care what you think about my accent. Mm. There is not an English accent. You can you just just speak it. It's it's fine. It does, yeah. does not matter how you sound. But uh, that's not really answering the question. But anyways, I just want to throw that there. I still appreciate it, though. That's why yeah. I love answering these questions. I don't expect an answer. I expect a response. Okay. Awesome. So I love it. I love it. No, that 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 speaks volumes to just the nature of how. Uh, people in other countries view English and accents. You know, they're trying to get a, get the point across that it, it, it's just another form of getting your points across. Mm. It's just another language. It's just mm -hmm. another medium. Anything else that is attached to it is just is is more reflective of the people who are who it's coming from. Yeah. More than anyone else. Yeah. So, you know, just another thing to bear in mind, people. Yeah. It's if you have a problem with the way the way any of us speak mm. that's exactly what it is mm, I, a problem yeah. and it's yours so you can have it <laughs> all we're trying to do is figure out why yeah exactly just you know <laughs> you, you don't you don't have to be white to sound a certain way like let's just put it out there for all you Papua New Guineans who think that this is a white accent it's not yeah. you, you just you just have to break down that I don't know what what uh, is it a stereotype a stereotype it's it's a uh, Oh, oh what's that word? It's close to becoming one, I'd say. No, it's yes, yeah, it's, it's not a stereotype, but it's um expectation. Yeah, well, it's an expectation, right? Mm -hmm. If you are, uh, you know, you're dar dark, dark, black-skinned, whatnot, mm -hmm. you have to sound like you're from some place that is not native in <laughs> English. But mm -hmm. English is p yeah. is one of our um national. Uh, languages right so we are technically native speakers yep so yeah so shock we've been we've been doing what what it says in our um country to do this forever guys what about you <laughs> yeah. um sorry yes like i said sorry i should i should say this is not targeted at anyone this is mm. really just trying to find out um the people who have a problem why they have that problem but you know as i said it's, if you do have that problem um it is indeed uh, a problem that you have yeah not us but if there's anything I uh, extract from that is that if you want to educate us on why you might have that problem that uh, that in no way is trying to uh, harass us or belittle us, let us know. Yeah. We'll be all ears. Like I am all ears I'm when it comes to myself. I, I, I remember <laughs> um, when I first went to church, well, went back to church as like um, a, a teenager. Mm -hmm. And because of the way I spoke, my church... Um, church members our youth youth group yeah yep. so a, a bunch of the a bunch of the youths they didn't like me they're like oh my goodness look she, she she's such a show off whatnot but oh, wow. uh -huh. but of course we started spending more time together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then they they got used to it and then they w became open enough to tell me that this is how they thought of me mm -hmm. but you know they got to learn to live with it and i think for us in our own social circle circles people sort of accept this is the way that we are and mm -hmm. even you know people along my street who don't uh speak the same way i do mm -hmm. they they first perceived me as someone so different but now it's like normal they, they yeah. just accept it and it just goes back to just us ex existing you know, I they love will it. soon mm. realize that just you just have to live with it, deal with it. This is this person, yeah. That's it, and that's the point that I. It's that's such a good point. I think if we're good with that, that to end on, because I guess the main takeaway from this is that um, just because people berate us about the way we speak, we're really not gonna 
do anything about it. I mean, it's, mm. if anything, it just solidifies um, whatever values that we have in being mm. ourselves. You know, yeah. the more people tell us tell us to be ourselves. Um, shock, we're still gonna do it. I mean, what are you expecting, honestly? And I think it's just because of that virtue that I think right now, in today's landscape, mm. I feel like I wanna say that it's a little more accept mm. acceptable than it was, say, 10, 15 years ago when we were in like high school yeah. or like lower school. I feel like yeah. it's gonna age out. I feel yeah. like as we get older and as our generation, as more generations come, they'll yeah. sound mm. or speak in a way that reflects the media that they consume. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Which doesn't sound like a PNG accent because there's a, not a lot of PNG media out there that perpetuates That's the it. local Papua New Guinean accent. So Absolutely. you can't help how they sound. That's mm -hmm. just. I think my issue is that I never really have an issue with people's accent. It's more or less their command on the English language. If I can understand what you're saying, then I don't really have an issue with it. But if you're fucking up and you don't <laughs> know how to speak proper, like I'm not saying speak with an accent. I'm saying speak. You know, with proper grammar, grammar usage, yeah. and if you're trying to use a phrase or a term, use it correctly. That's all. That's all I'm asking. That's only when yeah. I have an issue with someone, whenever they're speaking. I think this might sound like that I'm attacking people, but I, that just made me. So you, you want to no, say no, first? Because no, I feel, ahead. I feel like okay. this will just be shitting on people, but I'm really not. And it just makes me think of all these long ass articles that we see in certain papers that are just using so many like five kina words that are like eight syllables long and then none of them are spelled correctly or none of them are are, are used in the right context mm. or they oh just throw it in there because they 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 to me they want to sound achieved they want okay. to sound that intelligent and if this is this offends anyone i'm sorry it's just an observation read a book Oh my gosh! <laughs> so definitely a very loaded conversation, um, but I think has has everyone just aired out their thoughts on the subject? Because um, yeah, I think I have. I feel a lot better. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, th I think yeah, I, I think I you know I'm still going to air out my opinions if people come back to me. But so far, I've not um, had any backlash on my TikTok page. So nice. people are, are, are used, are getting used to me speaking like this. So it's great. It's That's great, it. Yeah. Just got to be you. And then people will eventually hear. You know, Except this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, it's like when they, when they tell you, just be yourself. I don't, wh why don't you what? fucking accept me? Huh? 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Or it. <laughs> Uh, you know that question sometimes if people so, there are days when people ask me uh, they tell me you know be yourself and i'm just like i don't even know what myself is sometimes oh god <laughs> it's like oh they inadvertently <gasps> gaslight you oh. and it's just like that's the worst <laughs> thing it's like who are you and i'm like i don't know <laughs> Who are you, ASAP? Oh, God. <laughs> it's just, and it starts to get terrifying to that point where you start to almost, like, the, 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 the most terrifying thing is when this happens so much, and this has happened to me sometimes when I was little, mm -hmm. where I used to try change the way that I speak. I used to not go out to talk to people anymore. I think it's because of shit like this. It's why I became an introvert. It's mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. when I tried to be myself around people, they're like, ew, a retard. And then I just went back into my shell. That's so <laughs> sad. It is sad and I hate it, but you know, it, it, it forged me into the person I am today. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I can't do anything but thank them for it. Mm -hmm. So thanks. Thanks to the haters. You brought me this far. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. Oh. <sighs> But I guess um I guess that brings us to the end of our conversation. What? I think I don't know. Usually okay, so usually at the end of the podcast what we do is we just go around the table and we talk about um uh, any any new music, any new books, any new TV shows and movies that we've been watching. Just because okay. it's a nice way to decompress. Okay. So just talk about um, mm -hmm. anything cool. So, Becca, how about you? Uh, any new music, any of uh, this is uh, I'm pro probably sure I'm, I'm, I'm sure that probably mm -hmm. your um, listeners would not know what I'm talking about but there's this like really cool um, TikTok sound that's trending Ooh, uh -huh. and sound. yeah but it's, it's just it's so I don't know it's so stupid but then like, it's is it so a song cool. or a sound it, or is that the same thing it's it's it was a sound that turned into a song and it's oh. like trending it's got like Ooh, like close it's, to okay. I think like hundreds of thousands of like videos down to it. So it's basically this guy in his fifties. He's um doing an interview, and then the 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 la lady who's interviewing asks him like, "Oh, you were rapping before?" And then the guy's like, "Yeah." And it's like, "Oh, can you give us a snippet?" And then he starts rapping, and so they decided to just add a little bit of music into it. 
And then like it's a whole a whole dance to it. Everything. It's like a thing now. Yeah. And oh. it's like um my money don't jiggle jiggle. It flows. What is you wiggle wiggle? Let's if you find go. it, just put it on. Like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to find that. I'm gonna put it put it here when I when I edit it because yeah. that sounds really fun. Can you remember any of the rap that you did? My money don't jiggle jiggle. It folds. I like to see you wiggle wiggle for sure. It makes me wanna dribble dribble. You know, riding in my fear. You really have to see. I, I've not really been into um the latest movies recently mm. although i know multiverse is out yeah, and yeah. <laughs> you both went to see it <sighs> uh, and i cannot wait to see it so i'm gonna you know go mm. have a look at that but um we definitely recommend it's mm, mm. i i've just been submerged into the amber heard and johnny depp uh, oh lawsuit. God. that's what oh i've been God. into yeah oh my God. <laughs> what's happened now because I, I i've been avoiding social right. media for like the last two days because of spoilers for multiverse uh, so i don't know uh, what's happening what's the latest black guy? Yeah. right right now she is uh she's being cross-examined so yesterday uh. yesterday was amber heard's turn to come and uh you know give, to give her testimony everything okay. and so sis was trying to force herself to cry she oh, that's an ugly face so she was it's making familiar. so many faces but there were no tears <laughs> at all and like all the the comments were just like does she really think we're that stupid <sighs> and then every time she would answer a question she'd always be like looking at the jury like every single time like uh, who, who's gonna buy your story and it, she's <laughs> sort of like introducing new um evidence new evidence as uh. well Ch uh, her story has changed from what she had uh, put out in the beginning oh my God. and you know there are all, all um there are videos of um them li living the uh courthouse mm -hmm. and then like with Johnny Depp he's got his windows down and everybody's mm -hmm. like coming up shaking his hand oh throwing him God. gifts and then when it's like Emma Heard's car everybody's like quiet just showing the rude finger and like her glasses are wound up like oh. uh, no oh. eh, people Shit. don't like her at all don't like her at have all. you seen those edits where <clears throat> it's like footage of when Johnny was being cross-examined and someone put I think the Wii music or yes, yes. Yeah, and then like little captions of what he's yeah. thinking, and, oh my God. and there's that infamous like, scene of uh, I think Amber's lawyer uh, ob objecting his own he question. Himself, question. Uh, he he objection. asked it, obje uh, objection hearsay, and then the judge like, um, but you're you asking. Must... And he's like, oh yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that was. <laughs> I can't wait for the movie about this. Oh, I swear, it's gonna be we a were, comedy. We were we were talking about. I think this was on that Wednesday. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah we were talking about uh, with theorizing. Three to four, maybe five years from now, they're mm. gonna make a movie about this entire case. It's gonna I be comedy think drama. So. Yeah. They're gonna have what's her name, Khaleesi. Oh yeah. To play, uh, to play Amber Heard's character. <laughs> I literally, I just wanted to say Daenerys. Sorry. Daenerys, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, sorry, yeah, yes. Khaleesi. Daenerys. Um, but uh, also, name? they're gonna get Johnny Depp to play Johnny Depp. Absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. Or get Nicolas Cage to play Johnny Depp. Oh, man. Full on, full on support of this. Yeah, it's, oh, it's so so. Yeah, she's being cross examined today. So I cannot wait. What's going to come out? Like I'm oh, waiting for oh, what the, the lawyers. The memes. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> the memes. What the lawyers exactly. are going to be like asking her, and Ooh. it's just it's such a shit show, and I'm like here for it. I mean, she got what she asked for. Yeah, she really thought like Johnny wouldn't do anything about it. Like no, nah. uh, and the um the Aquaman uh Aquaman two the g what is it again? I think the th I think I heard about that as well. The petition on. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, to get her removed or something. Yeah, How many change dot org three point five million recent like this uh, late, late uh, updated today. Mm. It's not impossible to do it in post because that's what they did with uh I forget his name. It was Chris Dilley or Anthony Dilley. I can't remember the name, but the when they replaced the, the pilot, yeah, 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 yeah. They they did something like that in the movie. Uh, uh -huh. the, Army of the Dead. Army of the Dead. It was a Netflix film, okay. but they had a character that they shot all his scenes for. But then when they were about to release the movie, so many of these like nasty allegations came out to him. Yeah. So they basically had to cut all, mm. edit all of his scenes out, and then refilm them with a new actor. Damn. And they did that really quite well. In like, digital post, they didn't call back the actors to refilm scenes they wow. they it's like they replicated the lighting and everything yep. the shots and then com compositing and everything and just fit her into the movie i didn't even realize she wasn't actually there until it was like yeah. until i watched a breakdown of the vfx and then i thought yeah, oh yeah. shit she wasn't like on set the new actor that they got to replace the old one 
there's so many scenes where they're interacting with each other, but it turns out that that actress never, never. even spoke to anyone on the movie. It was it was Damn. crazy. So like it's possible. We get that it's possible. Mm. And um, on in that uh, also, I also heard that there was um, something going around that in the next Aquaman, all of her scenes were cut down to just ten minutes. Like they're trying their ah. best to cut her out. Yeah, yeah I, I I've not seen that. Like one one thing I got from mm-hmm. this. Uh, uh, there was this executive from Disney what yeah that came up and he he basically said like you know Hollywood we have no problem with like drunkards and druggies because Jesus, they're that's, just that's everywhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> but when it comes to like domestic violence or anything like that then we we take we take it very very seriously so if they're going to be cutting down Ember's scenes or probably just like take her off completely like what happened to Johnny Depp with uh, Pirates of the uh, Caribbean. Now he just has lost all faith with Disney. Mm. He just never wants to work with them, no matter how yeah, much no, money good, they throw at him. Good, good, Yeah. Yeah. Good on him. And Warner Brothers, because they also kicked him off of... Oh, Fantastic Beasts. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, yeah, no. He needs that independence. I think he just needs that distance from the industry mm-hmm. for a while now, because mm. the way they treated him is just heartbreaking. Yeah, I mean, when she first came out with all her uh, allegations, I just, I couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, so no. slimy. It didn't make sense to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she's the one. She she's actually the one with a history of domestic abuse, mm-hmm. uh, abusing her other partners. Yeah. Compared yeah. to like Johnny Depp, who's never had any issue at all. Never. Jesus, I swear to God, if gaslighting was a person, her name would be Amber Heard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the one. All right, um, but I think that nicely wraps up and decompresses our heavy awesome. what did I say it was heavy the heavy talk on the accents now it was I fun th- to get that yeah. out actually I think yeah, no. I think we just needed to get that out because we've faced you know so yeah. We just, yeah absolutely and there's still there's, there's value in that mm-hmm. but thank you so much for coming on to the episode I'm, today and thank I'm, you for joining us thank you so much for inviting me so yeah it's no worries at all if anything else comes along if you're doing anything cool please don't hesitate to like jump on back off I mean yes. you do live quite nearby so yeah, anytime I, you yeah. want to if we, if we need like any if there anything if there's anything on social media happening because we're not well versed with new social media when I say new social media yeah. like in TikTok, TikTok. okay I have an account but all I know how to do is just post stuff i don't know how to make it go places that's the thing um but yeah if we have any other subjects like that we would love to have you on again. sure I, I'd, I'd i'd love to come like it's no problem at all yeah yay all right well thank you so much and thank you all for listening ladies and gentlemen this has been yes. not culture the podcast uh not culture is a podcast that is brought to you by myself godfrey man Captigal, who hosts and edits it and daniel levi who sits there and looks pretty yay we release episodes whenever we <laughs> release them because we're honestly trying our best to work on a definitive um release schedule but uh that'll I'm not going to say anything because you guys will hold it against me. But thank you so much for listening. And we will see you all in the next episode. Ciao. Bye.